So what am I saying over here? Well, I'm not saying anything. What's Rabbi Moshe Feinstein saying over here? He's saying like this. It says, So it's very harsh. And in the same Pasuk, in the same Pasuk, it says, Vayoymer elav ani Hashem. Vayoymer is soft, is compassion. That's what Vayoymer connotates. So you have the Vayadaber, and then you have the Vayoymer, but in the same Pasuk, you'd think it would be Vayadaber Pasuk Aleph. Vayoymer Pasuk Beis, after everything cooled down, and after Meshav Rebbe got the point, but no. Why? Why in the same Pasuk does the Kaddish Baruch Hu come with a Vayadaber and an Elohim, two things that are justice, that are hard, and then in the same Pasuk it says, Vayoymer. Soft, compassionate, what's the pshat? So as Meshav Feinstein, from this we see that the Pasuk is teaching us a tremendous lesson in the method of rebuking your children or rebuking your fellow man or rebuking your spouse if you should be doing that if you should be rebuking let's just say there is a time that you should be let's just say you have to give a little bit of, uh, of musr okay, let's just say how do you give the musr? how do you do it? what's the skill? says Rav Meisha, this is this Pasuk is telling us the skill sometimes you need to use harsh words 100% there are times in life after, obviously, there's a lot of love and he, he, the person trusts you. Because if you just go over to somebody and start screaming, like, you know, in shul. I was in shul once. I was in shul a lot of times. But one time I was in shul and somebody was talking. Literally, he said, like, one word in Middle Davening. And, like, this big, massive guy turns around. You ready for this? You ready? He's like... Often. You never saw somebody shush like this in your life. And the guy didn't even speak, he sneezed. The guy thought he talked. And I was like, whoa, I was standing right there like a, I was like, Whoo! no umbrella, right? I was soaked. Emotionally, physically, everything, right? And I was thinking, like, wow, that is that is one way to rebuke somebody talking during Davin. Wow, there are they there are ways to do that. He was like, it was like a wind up. I'm like trying to dive in, and all of a sudden I see somebody like on a runway, like about to take off. No, I'm, I'm not kidding. It was like <laughs> he, like, he, like, you know, he went out there, like, he was, and the guy's like, do you know that? Like, oh, now he's going to stop talking. No, for sure. After he busts up your car, he'll definitely, he'll never talk again. No, for sure. Or, or maybe not. How do you rebuke somebody in shul? Do you shush them? And if you need to shush them, is there a way to shush? You know, when you beep, there are different ways to honk your horn, Right? But when you know, if you knew that there was a certain individual in the in the car in front of you, a large individual who who may or may not have a weapon in his car, there is no way you're gonna be like a second, like it didn't even turn green yet. It's like still red, but it's up. You know it's about to turn green. So you know some streets, the walkway, it, go, it first goes walk for a few seconds, and you start beeping, and then he's like, "What? Like it didn't turn green yet?" It's just like, yeah, 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 chill out. It didn't turn green yet. But anyways, if you knew he was saying that, you would never honk your horn the way you do, right? You'd be like, <clears throat> Deet, excuse me, are you going to look on your phone? Maybe it's time to go. Because you'd be afraid. Because that's a beep. That's a wake-up sign. Like, you're, you're stuck on your phone. So just like, bing, bing. You don't have to do it 48 times and hold it down for 10 minutes and, and, you know, say things that shouldn't be said from anybody's mouth ever. And yet sometimes we do that. That's not a way to rebuke somebody. That's not a way to honk your horn. Now, there are times when a car swerves into you that you need to do a little more than that. If you could hit me, you want to hit me, no problem, but maybe you should have did it. No, so there you, you push harder. But you should not be ferociously pushing in, you know, because that's not a way to rebuke somebody. That's not a way to do it. It's just a muscle with the car thing. But how do you shush someone in school? I'm saying, how do you shush in shul? Like, you don't have to wind up to shush. You could just be like... Whatever, and then I have a look. When I do it, which I do sometimes, I don't even look. I go, shh, and I close my eyes, shh, no. Imagine, like, winding up with a snap, like... <laughs> yeah, crack your finger on the way. But there's a way to do it. There's a way to do it. And obviously, the shushing is just an example as well. Just an example. How do you rebuke your children? Do you first say something harsh because he touched the knife? Touch the fire, went into the street, maybe even give a patch if you need to. I'm not paskining. Oh, email. Oh, how dare you say you patch? I'm not saying you patch. I'm just saying if that's your derech. So what do you do right after that? Do you throw him into his room or her room and close the door and angry for the next four and a half years? Or in the same sentence, 
you explain how you love them and how it's Vayomer. So you first do the Vayadabra, then you do the Vayomer. And, and this is not only with children. Sometimes when we talk to our spouse, sometimes it's like you, you get all crazy, like, whoa, whoa, that's not a way to... Now sometimes things have to be said, but in the same sentence you could always... You know, don't read it from cards like, how dare you, but I love you. No, no, don't. Like, my Rebbe said to say that you... No, that's not the point. The point is get the idea of how you're supposed to be doing it. How would you want it to be done to you? There's a message that has to come across over here. You clearly don't understand the dangers of internet. Let's just say, okay? Great example. Oh, classic. He's going back to the internet. And, um, and I want to let you know how dangerous this is and how it's going to literally sever and rip up your soul. Sounds harsh, no? Yeah, that's the point. But you could do this. And you have the power, and you're an ambassador of God, and you have the potential to become a great person. Look at your eyes, look how precious, look how expensive they are. How could you just let them wander on such material? There's a way to do it. There's a way to do it, but sometimes you have to be harsh. You have to explain what's going on. So that's the Vayadabar. But in the same Pasuk, that means in the same sentence, you have to also say Vayemer. Now again, I'm not Pasuk any Yalachas here, and I'm not some great, massive psychologist who knows, I don't know how these things work either. I'm just sharing with you what Misha Feinstein says over here. When you rebuke somebody because it's necessary, and because you know they're going to listen, or because it's a family member, or because it's whatever, it has to be done for the benefit of that person, not for you, for them. So just do it in a way where they get the message, in a way where they understand you're doing it for them. This is not about you. It's about them. So make sure they feel like it's about them. Comprende? Okay. Great.